A couple of weeks back, I posted a video where I showed you guys five apps that were on my daily driver phone that I used pretty much every single day. In this video, I'm going to continue that with five more applications that I use pretty much every single day. And we're going to start off with a little bit of a strange one, because while this is an application, it's not actually something that you install on your phone, but you see it being used on my channel all the time. And if I pull up my phone right here, you're seeing it right now. It's the thing I'm using to control my phone with my mouse and keyboard to display my phone on my computer. I've talked about it a couple of times, so I'll be kind of brief. It's called Screen Copy. Now this might look a little bit daunting for some of you, but trust me, this is really not that bad. You're going to click on the link in the description down below. It's going to take you to this GitHub page and we can scroll down to where we see get the application and I am running Windows. So I'm going to click on the Windows button and now we can scroll down and we can download the latest version and I am using a 64-bit computer, which I am assuming you probably are as well. We've got that downloaded. Let's jump over to my download folder. I'm going to right click on this and you can extract it with extract all or you can use something like WinRAR, which is what I use. And we should have a nice little folder here with everything that you need already inside it. Now what I do to actually make things easier on myself, I'm going to take this folder and I'm going to place it in a very specific place. So I have in the root of my C drive an ADB folder and this is where I have all kinds of different uh, developer option type things for Android and in here I have a screen copy folder. So I'm just going to take these files and I'm going to drag them into this screen copy folder and we're going to let it replace these files. Now you'll notice that two of these files are my own and I will quickly mention those here in just a moment. Back on your phone, you do need to enable developer options. So this is an Oppo Find N5, different devices will be slightly different, but you were looking for about device and then you were looking for version and then version number. As long as you find version number, you're good. You can click it a bunch of times until it pops up and says you are now a developer. At that point under system, you should see developer options and you should be able to scroll down and turn on USB debugging. Plug your phone into your computer, a pop up appears that asks you if you want to allow this debugging to occur hit yes and you're most of the way done once your phone is plugged in and all of this is set up like this if you just double click screen copy.exe what's going to happen is you're going to see a pop-up that looks like this with a little command line some things happening and then you're going to see the screen on your phone pop up as well. Now I did tell you that I was going to talk about those other two random uh, little files here, the screen copy wireless shortcut and the wireless dot bat. What do those do? All right, so you should see this little file here. This says open a terminal here and it's a batch file. If you double click on it, guess what it's going to do? It's going to open up a terminal here. Now with your phone still plugged in, if you type in SCRCPY space minus minus TCPIP and you hit enter, what you should get is this thing firing up and then eventually, once it's done, you should have your phone displaying on your computer just like this. But the cool thing is, if I can show you this on screen, you can unplug it and everything continues working. I use this all the time. So how does that tell you what that other couple of little files were? Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm shortcutting that process. So basically what you want to do is right click and then create a text file right down here, a text document. And then what you're going to do is you're going to type this into the text document, just as you see it on screen at echo off screen, copy space, minus, minus, TP or TCPIP. And then you're just going to save it as wireless.bat. You have to make sure you're changing it from a text file to a batch file. And at that point, whenever you double click on this, it should fire this up and it should do the entire process for you without you having to type in anything at all. And there is my wireless screen capture going right now. From there, what I do is I actually save this as a shortcut on my start menu because I use it so much. But this process is a little bit strange. So if you right click on this and then you click on show more options to create a shortcut, you can't just straight away pin this to your start menu because Windows is dumb. What you need to do 
is right click on this and click on properties and this target right here at the end you need to put this into parentheses and then at the beginning of it, you need to put in the direct location to your command prompt. So C colon backslash windows backslash system32 backslash cmd.exe forward slash C. And then you have the rest of it there. That should allow this. See how the icon just changed? You should now be able to pin this to your start menu and you can rename it and do whatever you want to do. I will paste that bit into the description down below to make this easier for you. But the basic idea now is that I can pull up my start menu and just click on that shortcut and everything just fires up really, really quickly for me. And it makes doing this sort of capture very, very simple. Now there are actually more things that you can do with screen copy, like displaying your phone's camera on your screen as well. You'll see all the commands for that uh, in the link down below too screen copy itself. You basically do them the same way you did the command that made this wireless. But guys, spent a lot of time on number one. We got to move on to number two. This next one is something that I'm surprised more people don't know about. Go into the Google Play Store and search for Google Opinion Rewards. And what this app is going to do is periodically pop up and just ask you questions. And it might be about a place you've just been to. It might be about a Google search that you just did. And it's just gonna ask you some brief survey questions and it's gonna give you a little bit of money. Nothing crazy, not like a huge amount of money, but as you can see, I've got $7.48 on my account. And then periodically I will use that to rent a movie or buy an app or do something like that. Maybe buy some stuff in a game, whatever you want to use it for. Generally speaking, these surveys take less than a minute. It's just basically they'll pop up and say, hey, did you search for one of these things? And it'll be like five things. And you're like, oh yeah, that's the one I searched for. And then it will ask you a few questions about how your Google search experience was and you answer them and then they give you like 37 cents and you move on with your day. It's just free money. Next up on the list is an application called Merlin and this one is super duper nerdy, but I love it. I think this app is so cool. So what does Merlin do? Merlin helps you rapidly identify birds. Whenever you first install this app, it's going to say, hey, you're in this region, so these are the bird packs we think you should install. It'll download them and install them. And once you're up and running, you're outside someplace and you hear the call, the chirp of a bird, and you think, I don't recognize that bird. So you click on sound ID, it starts listening. And you just have to hold your phone there and let it listen. And it will in real time tell you what birds it is hearing in that moment. It is crazy how well this actually does work. Let me actually show you really quickly. So we've stepped outside here and you can see I've actually got a shortcut that goes straight into starting a new recording. We'll see what we can pick up here. So in real time, you can see that it's picked up an Eastern Tauhe, a Northern Cardinal, a Carolina Wren. You can see me talking up there at the top. If I stop talking, there is the waveform of that bird call. If I click on one of these birds, I can actually scroll down and I can play back one of their calls. I can stop my sound recording and it will actually play back the call. And that can be pretty useful if you're trying to get a bird to call back to you. Just play its own sound back to you or a recording of a similar bird sound back to it. And that actually has worked for me several times. And it can also identify birds with a photo. So snap a photo of it, send that into it, and it does a pretty good job of identifying it that way as well. You guys know that I love weather applications, and I've actually just recently stumbled across a new one. It's only got 10,000 downloads, and I don't think that's going to stay that way very long. It's called WeatherWise, and it is actually free, and it can do a lot of the things that the radar apps I've shown you in the past, like Radar Scope and Radar Omega do, for no money. This is like a professional grade radar app like those, but again, it's free. So what makes this different than a normal radar app? Well, so you can see all these little blue dots. Those are actual radar stations. This is not a kind of radar app where you just see the whole nation's weather. You actually do have to zoom in and let's say maybe this weather is getting a little bit far from this a radar station, you could switch to this radar station and get a different view of it. But right now there's actually an ongoing tornado warning here in St. Genevieve. So let's switch back to this radar station and let's see if we can actually see any rotation. If we click on this little bar down here, we have several different products we could use like velocity, correlation coefficient, but velocity is going to be the good one for this. And what this is going to show you is the direction of the wind 
relative to the radar station. So red is one direction, green is the other direction. If you see red and green next to each other, that means you have rotation, that's probably bad. Correlation coefficient is another interesting product for things like this. What it's doing is it's showing how well do the objects in the sky correlate. Are they all the same size or are they different sizes? Well, if you have a tornado that's tearing up a town tragically and lofting bits of structures into the air, that debris will likely not correlate in size. So you will have what's called a CC drop. You'll be able to see that on this product. And again, on and on, there are a lot of different products here like Echo Tops. That's going to show us just how tall are these storms. The taller the storm, the more potent that they are. And I will tell you, these are some pretty potent storms because they're quite tall. So much that you can do here. And yes, there is a premium subscription that will get you even more things. But all the things I want to do are free. And as someone who uses stuff like this all the time, one thing that I'm instantly loving about it is just the overall performance. Unlike Radar Scope and Radar Omega, which are similar apps to this, if I go home and then go back into it, it doesn't have to reload. And if I try to multitask with this application, we'll just do threads, it didn't crash. And I know that's not asking for much, but Radar Scope and Radar Omega are both super duper crashy when it comes to split screen multitasking. So WeatherWise, I didn't even say the name of the app at the beginning. If I didn't, it's called WeatherWise and I, I really like it. Last but not least is a program that if I did not have, it would make my life so much harder. It is called Feedly. Back in the day, there used to be a lot of applications like Feedly. This is basically just a really nice RSS reader. And what that means is I have plugged in a whole bunch of different news sources. You can see all of them here. And it will just show me what is new on those websites right here in the app. How do I keep up with the news? How am I so frequently one of the first people to talk about certain news stories? Because I'm constantly refreshing Feedly and trying to keep up with the news that way. It lets me basically quickly scan through tons and tons of news all at once. I can scroll through all of this, and if I'm you know, going to say none of these are things I want to talk about, I mark them as red, and they are out of sight, out of mind, and I come back and I check this every 15 minutes, and that's basically just what my life revolves around. One thing I would recommend doing is going into your settings on Feedly and look for an option down here to use your system browser instead of the in-app browser. And all that's basically going to do is make it so that whenever you click on a link, it's just going to open it up in your browser of choice instead of be in the app. And then for me, what's useful about that is I can then bookmark that news story. And then when I come back to my computer, it's their bookmark because your bookmarks sync probably, depending on what browser you're using. But I absolutely adore Feedly. It's so good. It's It just works perfectly. Another cool thing you can do is not just add websites to this, but actually add a subreddit. I've said many times that I will, you know, peruse some phone subreddits for some inspiration, and I can have them right here in this app. And of course, you have the same experience here on your web browser, on your computer. If I dismiss the new stories here, they are dismissed in the app and vice versa. Very, very useful. And that reminds me, that last app, WeatherWise, there's a web app and it is exactly the same. It looks strikingly similar and everything about it is the same. So if you get used to using WeatherWise on your phone, guess what? You can use it on your, on your web browser, on your computer, and it's also free there and it works beautifully well. So a little extra one for that last, uh, last app. So guys, there you go. Those are five more applications that I use on my personal phone pretty much every day, and they make my life just a little bit easier. Let me know which of those, if any, actually stood out to you. And if you have your own set of apps that you just have to have on your phone, drop them in the comments down below. If you want to help support my channel in a more direct way, consider clicking that join button down below. In exchange for that, you're going to get early access to some video content, and you will see your name at the end of each and every video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.